So I'm just here in the shop. Customer brought a Troy built self propel lawnmower here. It's similar to the Toros in design and the engine, you know, seems really similar too. And he said that he did a spark plug, an air filter, and it wouldn't start. So the first thing I did was put my spark tester to it and notice that we didn't have spark. There's quite a few ground wires over here. He's got a ground wire here. He's got a ground wire here and then he's got one in the back there as well. And on this one, the kill switch is actually over here on your blade brake. So when you release the handle, it pushes into this little clip here. And you guys will notice that uh, this shroud, which I've already taken off and you know we've already figured out what the issue is, uh, this piece here, this little plate is bent. So I'm not sure how it got bent, but we have spark now. But when we put the shroud back on, we notice that it just barely touches this. And this is your kill wire here, guys. So when this wire is touching ground, or you can see touches that arm, then what happens is your engine dies because your coil is now grounded out. So if I get onto the lever that engages your drive, you can see that it drops down just like that, right? So now nothing is grounding except obviously we're still being grounded to that shroud. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna notch out that little piece of metal there. But what's normally supposed to happen is your engine's running and then you release the handle and then that pushes up like that. But if I bend that up, then this will be farther up and away from this. So then I'm gonna have to bend that up and I don't wanna have to start you know, warping metal and all that. So what I think happened is this just got hit somewhere, but it still works. So like I said, what I'm gonna do is come in here with a zip disc and I'm gonna cut that off. So I'm gonna remove this shroud and then I'm just gonna zip off that little piece of metal. It won't hurt anything and it'll take a couple seconds and my customer will have spark. Now, a good way to test for spark when you have your shroud off, so if we take that shroud completely off, if you guys ever want to test a machine for spark when you have a shroud off, go ahead and get yourself a drill and get yourself a socket that matches the flywheel nut and you can come up here and spin it and it'll rotate and that's exactly what we did because we wanted to you know see if it had spark before we put everything back together because it would be kind of a pain you know to put everything back together and then go ahead and, and not have spark and have to take it all apart again now I should note that this machine has like I said two kill wires so one goes under here and you guys can see it goes up under the coil now I don't really like how that's positioned up underneath the coil and on top of the intake manifold because the intake manifold here, uh, that's going to heat up. So you might run into an issue where that melts, but it hasn't and I'm just going to leave it because I really don't want to take the coil off and do any more work than I have to because again, like I said, we do have spark. Uh, also, you want to make sure that up on your handle here, on this particular model, we have uh, choke, so that's full choke on. So when your handle's all the way forward, you want to come down here to your air box and you want to make sure that it chokes and you can see that it doesn't choke. So what I'm going to have to do is just uh, loosen this off and just position this wire until that butterfly valve is completely closed. So after a quick adjustment on this little cable here, we have our slow setting, we have our medium setting, we have our fast setting right there, it kind of clicks into place and then we have our full choke where you guys just saw the butterfly valve in there close completely. So that's what you want because if it's a cold day, you're gonna wanna choke your machine for a cold start. Now the one thing that I love about the Toros and the Troy belts is that they have this really nice design where the fuel tank bolts on by one bolt right at the back. So when you go to take your shroud off, you guys can basically just rotate this back out of the way and uh, obviously you know that's loose and in the way this is normally in that position there so this thing would kind of just rotate up just like that so it's a really nice design however after doing that a couple times you'll get what we have here which is a little cracked fuel line there so I'm gonna have to just replace that uh, back piece of fuel line there because you guys can see that when you go and pull that back, the fuel line starts to uh, tear. So that was already kind of like that, and I did smell fuel when he dropped it off. So 
I figured maybe it was just the uh, carburetor leaking, but that's no big deal. So again, uh, like I said, guys, this is just a quick little video showing you guys if you don't have spark on a Troy Built or a Toro, sometimes it could be one of these little kill switches here and not actually your coil or uh, anything else like that. So the before on this little shroud here looks like that. And like I said, I'm just going to notch that out and then I'll bring you back once I got that notched out. And then here's a quick after. So again, I've just taken my grinder, just notched that out a little bit, won't hurt anything. And now hopefully I should have spark. So I'm just going to go in here with my Dremel just to take off the sharp little burrs that are on the back there. And then uh, we'll get this fitted back up on the machine and see how it looks. Even put a little bit of paint on there so it don't rust. Not bad. So this is just a quick little test fit here and it looks like we're not touching, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the pull start up at the top there. It just uh, bolts up underneath the handle, and then I will bolt in the shroud and then just give it a little pull with my spark tester uh, hooked up. And for this particular test, I'm just using a gap type spark tester, so you can kind of you know adjust the gap, and the more gap you have, the more voltage is going through there. And that spark tester there will prove my theory whether or not that kill switch was uh, just touching the metal on that shroud there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all hooked up, and then uh, we'll see if we got spark. And when you're using this kind of spark tester, Basically, you don't have to uh, hook it up to the spark plug. You can just hook up one end to the spark plug cap. This is your high tension lead coming off your coil. And then the other end just goes to a source of ground. So we just did it to a bolt there. Whereas the other spark tester I have, one end plugs into your high tension lead and the other end plugs onto your spark plug cap. And there's a little LED light. That one's pretty good for uh, diagnosing a quick spark issue when your machine has the spark plug in. Whereas this one, I can basically take the spark plug out so it makes pulling over the engine a lot easier. And going back to, you know, when I was using the drill, when the shroud is off on these, the recoil is on the shroud. So if you take the shroud off, now you don't have the recoil there, which means you can't pull start your machine. So we use the uh, gap type spark tester, again, hooked to ground and then to the high tension lead. We remove the spark plug and then we take the drill and spin the flywheel and that makes it a lot easier to uh, diagnose spark when you don't have a shroud on. So again, I have everything hooked back up now, except for this uh, gas tank because I still have to do the fuel line, but I am going to test and see if our little retrofit worked here. So we have the handle up above depressed, which is in the run position. So the kill switch here should not be engaged. And then down here, I've taken the spark plug out just so it's easier to turn over. And when we pull it, you guys can see we have plenty of spark. So our little retrofit here by just notching out a little bit of that metal ended up working out just fine. And we don't have to go around and bend stuff up. So this job is pretty much finished. So now all I have to do is go ahead and replace that fuel line. Okay, so not only do we have a crack right there, but on further inspection, we also have a crack up here starting on the front fuel line there. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this air box cover off and then I should have access to uh, the back of the carburetor there and be able to get a pair of pliers in there to pull that fuel line off. And then I'll pressure test this uh, fuel valve here using my pressure tester to make sure that works and it doesn't leak. And then I'll go ahead and measure out a whole line and replace that. New fuel line is now installed front and back. I got the air filter housing back on and I went and just double checked the butterfly valve to make sure that still closes all the way when it's in choke. Minimal spillage. There was a little bit of gas in the tank, but my customer said it was fresh, so I didn't want to drain it and charge him for a liter of fuel. So I'm going to put the air filter back on this, snap that little piece back up on top of here, and we're going to fire this thing up. So I got this thing outside and I got a clamp on the back to hold the bar into place. So let's see if she fires up. So we got this thing running, but the drive is engaged. So I think his belt might be a little too tight because I have this thing all the way back. But at least it runs. So this thing runs. Now I figure the belt might be a little too tight here because it's engaged when the handle here is disengaged. So this design here, basically you're in first gear here, if I can get a shot of it, and then you roll this up forward and it kind of sets your speed and that does work so when it was in the number one the wheels were kind of spinning slowly and then when I rotated it forward you could see the wheels really starting to take off the only thing is that uh, this is supposed to be uh, disengaged so you can see there disengage stop and then that's on so what's happening is either uh, this cable 
Uh, sometimes they get a little rusty inside of the rubber there and they just uh, don't move as well. So it could be the cable or maybe the arm that the idler pulley runs on could be a little corroded and not moving as well. But the issue of the spark has been fixed and it was just a case of that little kill switch there grounding out to the shroud. So again, using our grinder, we just notch that out a bit, hit it with some black spray paint so that it doesn't rust. The deck on this is aluminum, so it doesn't need to be undercoated, but we are going to drain the oil and uh, put some fresh oil into it. But after we drain it and before we put fresh oil in, we're just gonna uh, flip this on its side and take the blade off to give it a nice sharp edge. So then this mower is basically done and tomorrow we will return it back to our customer. So interestingly enough, I got a Toro GTS. It's a six horsepower and these Toros are essentially the same as that Troy built that I was just working on. So this is uh, the day after and sure enough, this thing basically has the identical kill switch. So that thing yesterday I showed you guys was bent down, which ended up putting the kill switch kind of in a different spot and what we did was we just notched that out. Now on this one, it has a slightly different uh, top upper shroud, but the metal shroud underneath it is uh, pretty much identical. Basically, that's uh, exactly what happened. This thing just got a little bent and uh, it just put the kill switch out of whack. So it's kind of nice. I was able to show you what it's actually supposed to look like. And just like I said before, it's supposed to be straight. On this one, the issue was that uh, this thing needed a carb clean and he was pulling this thing so many times, I think he said it took about uh, six pulls to get it started, so he ended up snapping the pull start cable. So we're gonna have to rewind a new cable in there, uh, clean a carb, and then we'll do an uh, oil change as well. Well, that's it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe, and you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to come on back next week. Check the channel out for what we got new, and as always, guys, Thanks for watching.